If you want to learn about this grammar point, then keep on watching. Minasan! Konnichiwa! Welcome back to Nihongo. Genki desu ka? I hope you're doing well. Before we begin, make sure to check out the vocabulary list for this lesson. If you find this channel helpful, please consider becoming my patron to my Patreon page where you can get the lesson PDF for this lesson. Hai, jumbi dektara, hajime masho! Our first grammar point is the prefix a and so, which is used for demonstrative pronouns. So what is a demonstrative pronoun? So it basically means it, they, that, she, or he. So if we want to uh, refer to a noun that has been previously mentioned, we use demonstrative pronoun. So in Japanese, these are the words such as are, sore, Kore, which we've all learned before from a beginner lesson two. So kore means this, sore means that, and are means that thing over there. We also learned kono followed by a noun, and sono and ano followed by a noun. So in this lesson, we will learn the difference between using the prefix a and so as a demonstrative pronoun. So we use the prefix a when the noun is both known to the speakers. So we can use are, ano, asoko, and so on. On the other hand, we use the prefix so if only one of the speakers know about the noun. So we use sore, sono, soko, and so on. For example, the noun textbook or kyokasho. If we want to mention it again, we use a demonstrative pronoun. We say are, that textbook, if it's both known to the speakers, or sore, that textbook, which is only known by one of the speakers. Another example is um, a person. For example, Jones-san, Miss Jones. So we can say that person, anohito. Again, if the, both the speakers know about Miss Jones, we use a, anohito. Otherwise, we use so, sonohito. So let's take a look at some examples. For example, do you have the textbook called Japanese for Everyone? Minna no Nihongo toyu kyokasho wo motte imasu ka? And then the other person might answer, No, what kind of textbook is that? Here we have the word that as a demonstrative pronoun, meaning it replaced the word minna no nihongo in this sentence, so we don't have to mention it again. So since the speaker or the, the other person answered no, we have to use the prefix so. So he will say, Iie. Sore wa, so that. So instead of are wa, since the other person doesn't know about the book, we use sore or sore wa. Donna kyokasho desu ka? Next example, A san says, Why don't we have your party at Watami Bar? Party wa Watami Izakaya ni shimasen ka? B says, Oh, it's the bar that opened last month. So here it shows that B knows about the bar that A is talking about. And he has some information about it. I heard the food there is delicious. So there is our demonstrative pronoun, which means Watami Izakaya or Watami Bar. Ah, Sengetsu Dekta Izakaya desu ne. So the one that opened last month. Asoko no. So there, asoko, so since B knows the bar, we use the prefix a. So soko becomes asoko. No, 
priori. So the food there is oishiso desu ne. I heard the food there is delicious. Another example. Do you know Miss Jones who came from Australia? Australia から来たジョンソンさんを知っていますか B says, no. Does that person or does she work for this company? So we use that person and we use the demonstrative pronoun that followed by a noun. So that refers to Johnson's son. Iie. So since the other person doesn't know, we use the prefix so. So no hito. That person. Kono kaisha de hataraiteiru n desu ka? Iie. その人、この会社で働いているんですか Another example, have you seen Pony's 4K TV? ポニー 4K テレビを見ましたか ?B says, yes, it has a beautiful screen and the sound comes from the screen itself. So, it, the word it refers to the 4K TV. A or yes. あれは、so it or that. A、あれは画面がきれいで、画面そのものから音が出ます。Next is when it is in written form. So in written form, we only use the prefix so. For example, after leaving the office, I had dinner in a restaurant at the station. I think I dropped my wallet. That time. So that time refers to the time after leaving the office. So the person says, Kaisha o deta ato. So this is、um, what we are referring to with our demonstrative pronoun. Kaisha o deta ato. Eki no restaurant de yushoko tabemashita. So I had dinner at the restaurant at the station. Next, so no toki. That time, そのとき、財布を落としたんだと思います。So here, like I said,、um, this is in written form, so not in conversation. So we use the prefix so. Next example. A popular British novel was translated into Japanese. It has become a bestseller in Japan this year. So we have the noun, a popular British novel, and we use It as a demonstrative pronoun to replace the noun here. So, a popular British novel, Igirisu no Ninki Shoseki ga Nihongo ni Honyaku sare mashita. Sore ga, so it or that、uh, becomes so, sore. Sore ga, kotoshi Nihon de bestosera ni nari mashita. Our second grammar pattern is the nani nani n j a n a i or nani nani n j a n a i desu ka? This is the shortened informal style of nani nani no dewa arimasen ka? Which means that the speaker is expressing what he or she is thinking. So basically, it means I'm thinking or I'm guessing that. So, how do we use this pattern? First, for the verbs and e adjectives, We get the plain form or we use the plain form. And then we add n j a n a i desu ka or n j a n a i And for nouns and na adjectives, we add na plus n j a n a i desu ka. So it becomes nani nani nan j a n a i desu ka. So here are the l e v e l of formality、uh, using this pattern. So, the very formal is nani nani no dewa nain de shou ka. Next to that is nani nani no dewa arimasen ka. Less formal is n j a n a i desu ka. And the very casual way is n j a n a i which is used when you talk to a very close friend or someone that you really, really know. So, you probably remember the じゃありませんか or じゃないですか So this is different from んじゃないですかじゃないですか means right or isn't it? For example, 
これはきれいじゃないですか。It's pretty, right? Which means that I know that you agree with me. On the other hand, んじゃないですか means I'm guessing. For example, 彼女はきれいなんじゃないですか Meaning, I'm guessing that your girlfriend must be pretty. For example, A says, You don't look well. I'm guessing there is something bothering you. So, first, you don't look well is, Genki ga nai desu ne. There is something bothering you is, Nani ka komatte iru koto ga aru. So, here we use the plain form. That's why we have aru. Followed by, I'm guessing, which is, んじゃないですか元気がないですね。何か困っていることがあるんじゃないですか And then B might say, Yes, as a matter of fact. A, 実は Next example. A says, I have no appetite lately. 最近食欲がないの。最近食欲がないの。And then B says, There's probably something wrong somewhere. You better have it examined at the hospital once. So he says, Something wrong somewhere. どこか悪い。And then, so since we have an E adjective, we don't have to change anything. We just need to add んじゃない because we are talking casually here. どこか悪いんじゃない There's probably something wrong somewhere. 一度病院で見てもらった方がいいよ。You better have it examined at the hospital once. Next example. He is very fluent in Japanese. I think or I'm guessing he's Japanese. 彼は日本語がペラペラですね。His Japanese is 日本人。Since we have a noun, we add na. Nihon jin na. Followed by I think or I'm guessing. Un janai desu ka? Nihon jin nan janai desu ka? Okay, again. Kare wa nihon go ga pera pera desu ne. Nihon jin nan janai desu ka? Okay, next. Our third grammar point is nani nani ta tokoro ni or de. This is used with verbs that indicate motion or movement, such as iku, to go, wataru, to cross, and so on. So, tokoro means place or position, right? So, it just means that um, after arriving at a certain position, um, after doing a certain motion, like, such as going there or crossing or turning, and then it is followed by another sentence or instruction. So, how do we use this pattern? We have verb in ta form and then we add tokoro. Tokoro means place or position and then it's followed by the particle ni or de. So, depending on the verb that follows, we can choose between ni if it's like a destination or like a location and de if an action is taking place. For example, The verb iku or go, we use the ta form. Itta tokoro ni or de, meaning at the destination after going. Another example is wataru, to go across or to cross something. So we change it to ta form. Watatta tokoro, at the destination after crossing. Magaru, to turn. We change it to ta form, magatta tokoro, at the destination after turning. For example, there is a post office just after you turn left at those traffic lights. So we say, ano shingo, those traffic lights, so you turn left. So we say, magarimas. So we change this to ta form. Hidari e, so left is hidari. Hidari e magatta tokoro ni. So since we are saying ni nani nani ga aru, 
okay, there is something in this certain location. That's why we use the particle ni. There is a post office. So, yubin kyoku ga arimasu. So, you know this pattern, right? Nani nani tokoro or nani nani ni nani nani ga aru. There is something in certain uh, location. Another example. Go out the ticket gate, then please stay and wait at the top of the stairs that you just climbed up. Obviously, so since there is a stair, the motion is to climb up the stairs. So we say, Kaisatsu dete. So go out of the ticket gate or go out the ticket gate and then kaidan o. Our verb is to climb up or noborimas. So we change it to ta form. Kaidan o nobotta tokoro de. So here we say, um, when you climb up the stairs, uh, at the top of the stairs, tokoro de. So since we are going to say, Matte kudasai. So here we use the particle de because the action is to wait. Kaisatsu dete kaida no nobota tokoro de matte kudasai. Next example. Cross the bridge, go for 50 meters and stop there. So there pertains to the destination after going for 50 meters. Kono hashi o watatte cross this bridge 50 meter ikimas so go becomes itta tokoro itta tokoro at the destination after going 50 meters tomete kudasai please stop okay that's why we use particle de tokoro de tomete kudasai kono hashi o watatte 50 meter itta tokoro de tomete kudasai. Our next grammar pattern is nani nani shiou to suru or shinai. So this means that a situation arises just before when you are about to do something, which results in for you not being able to do what you're supposed to do. So this means that just when I did nani nani or when I tried to do something, then something happened. How do we use this pattern? So we have the verb in volitional form. What is volitional form? We learned this in lesson 31. So for group 1, all we have to do is change the e syllable to o syllable. Okay? For group 2, we change the mas to yo. And for group 3, we change kimas to koyo and shimas to shiyo. Okay, so that's why um, here after changing it to volitional form, we can then add to suru or to shimas and shinai if it's a negative sentence. For example, de mas or to go out. The mas becomes de yo plus tosuru. De yo tosuru. When I try to go out, another example, diet tosuru. Go on a diet. It becomes diet to shio tosuru. When I try to go on a diet. And last example, wasureru to forget. It becomes wasure yo. To suru, when I try to forget. Okay, for example, when I was about to leave the house, the phone rang. So, I was about to leave the house. Ie o, so our verb is demas. So, we change it to volitional form. De yo, toshita. So, since we have... Uh, a past tense, I was, so tosuru becomes toshita toki. So we use this to um, describe the time. Toki, 
at the time when I was about to leave, the phone rang. Then waga kakatte kita. Ie o te yo to shita toki, den waga kakatte kita. Next example. When I tried to answer the phone, it hang up. Then wani de mas becomes then wani de yo to shita ra kirete shimatta. Or denwa kirete shimatta. Now, if someone is trying to do verb but still not able to do so, we can use nani nani to shteimas. So it's going um, on on their head. They're trying to do something. They have this will to do something, but then they're not able to do so. For example, I've been trying to go on a diet for my health. So there is a will, but it doesn't. It hasn't happened yet. Kenko no tame ni for my health. So diet to shimas becomes diet to shio to steimas. Kenko no tame ni diet to shio to steimas. Another example. I tried to forget about my ex-boyfriend, but I cannot forget about him. So here we have a past tense. So we say, Kareshi no koto about my boyfriend. Our verb is wasuremas to forget. We change it to wasureyo plus toshita because I tried. So it's in the past. Kareshi no koto wasureyo toshita ga, but wasurerare nai. Kareshi no koto wasureyo to shita ga wasurerare nai. I cannot forget about him. Now, the opposite of nani nani yoto suru is nani nani yoto shinai, meaning that a person does not make an effort to do verb. For example, even though it's bad for him, he does not intend or he does not make any effort to quit smoking. Karada ni warui no ni, even though it's bad for him, for him or for his body. Kare wa tabako wo, our verb is to quit, which is yamemas. So it becomes yameyo plus toshinai. Does not make an effort to quit. Karada ni warui no ni, kare wa tabako wo yameyo toshinai. Another example. Parents who won't listen or who don't make an effort to listen to what their children say won't be able to understand their feelings. Kodomo no hanashi o. Our verb is to listen. Kikimas. It becomes kiko. So this is a group one verb. Plus toshinai. Now. Here we are going to use this to describe what type of parent, those who won't listen to their children. Kodomo no hanashi o kikoto shinai oya wa kodomo no kimochi o rikai suru koto ga dekinai. Next is nani nani no daroka. So this means I wonder. So it is an expression used. When the speaker is asking himself or herself whether something is true or not, it is usually used with interrogatives such as "do," "how," or "itsu," "when." So, how do we use this pattern? We have the verb and e adjectives in plain form, followed by "no daroka." For nouns and na adjectives, we add "na," so it becomes. Nano daroka. Okay, nani nani no daroka. So meaning I wonder. So here the speaker is just asking himself. For example, I wonder why mother is angry. Okay, it's just a rhetorical question. Why mother is angry is naze okasan wa. Angry is okotte iru. So again, we use the plain form. And then we add, no daroka. Naze okasan wa okotte iru no daroka. 
I wonder. So the speaker is just asking himself. We can also say n daro to make it even more casual. So no becomes n, and then we just remove ka, and we use the rising intonation. Naze okasan wa koteru daro. So it means the same thing. Next example. I wonder what I should wear to the party. So here we have the interrogative, what. So we say, party to the party. Nani o kite ike ba i? What I should go, uh, wear to go to the party. Party nani o kite ike ba i plus no daro or no daro ka. Party nani o kite ba i no daro. This can also be used without any interrogative such as naze or nani when one thinks something is not true. For example, I wonder if kids can really learn from online classes. So here the speaker is saying that he does not believe um, children can learn from just doing online classes. So we say, Kodomo tachi wa honto ni online klasu de. Okay, so can kids really learn from online classes? I wonder. So we just add no daro. Kodomo tachi wa honto ni online klasu de benkyo suru koto ga dekiru no daro. Now, nani nani no daro is a question you ask yourself. But when you want to ask someone, like you wonder and you want to ask someone, we use nani nani no deshoka. It is a similar expression, but it's a gentler way of asking someone without demanding an answer. So compared to nani nani no deska, which is more direct. For example, when you go to a shop and you want to ask the shopkeeper, Excuse me, does this shop take credit cards? Or literally, I wonder if I can use my credit card here in the shop. So we say, Sumimasen, kono mise de wa kredito kado ga. So our verb is uh, can use. Skyru plus I wonder. No de shoka. So since we are asking, a real person, we use no de shoka, which is a polite way of asking someone. Again, sumimasen, kono mise de wa kredito kado ga skairu no de shoka. Again, that sounds very, uh, very polite. If you want to make it simple, you can just say skaimasu ka. Okay, so our sixth grammar point is when we have a noun with a particle which is used to modify another noun. For example, nani nani to no, nani nani de no, and so on. So how do we use this pattern? We have the noun one, followed by the particle or the case particle, plus no, and then we add the noun that it modifies, which is noun two. For example, tomodachi to no, America yoko, meaning, the trip to the U.S. with my friend. So we are describing what kind of trip it is or what kind of U.S. trip it is. It is the trip that I went to with my friend. Let's take a look at some examples on how to use this pattern. For example, the trip to the U.S. with my friend was enjoyable. So here we are describing the noun, the trip to the U.S. So what kind of trip is it? It's a trip with my friend. So we say, Tomodachi with is particle to. So after the particle, we add no. Tomodachi to no, followed by the main noun we are describing. America ryoko wa totemo tanoshikatta desu. Tomodachi to no America ryoko wa Totemo tanoshikatta desu. We can also say tomodachi to no eh, means no means itta. America ryoko 
meaning the trip to the U.S. I went to with my friend. So here we have the verb itta. I went to with my friend. But we can just um, say tomodachi to no America yoko wa. So they mean the same thing. Another example. How did your study abroad in Indonesia go? So we are describing study abroad, which is uh, it took place in Indonesia. So we say Indonesia de. So in is de because the action is taking place uh, in Indonesia. So we use the particle de plus no. Indonesia de no. Study abroad is yugaku. Indonesia de no yugaku wa how did it go? Do deshita ka? So this is similar to Indonesia de no becomes or no could also mean uketa or the one you took, the one you applied for. Yugaku. So it means study abroad you took in Indonesia. Again, they both mean the same thing. Next example. I was moved to tears when I read the letter from my student. So what kind of letter? It is from my student. Watashi no seito. Our particle is kara plus no. From my student. Watashi no seito kara no. Letter is tegami. O yonde naite shimatta. So again, watashi no seito kara no tegami o yonde naite shimatta. This is similar to watashi no seito kara no is moratta, received. Tegami, meaning the letter I received from my student. Okay? So we just removed the verb received here. The letter from my student. Now, if the particle is ni, it is changed to e. And then we add no. For example, what is a good souvenir for Miss Santos? Or souvenir to give to Miss Santos. So since we have the verb to give, we use the particle ni. Santos sensei ni ageru. So, to give to Miss Santos, omiyage is souvenir. So, we change this to e. Santos sensei ni becomes e plus no. So, now it becomes souvenir for Miss Santos. So, we don't uh, have to put the verb give to. Santos sensei no omiyage wa. Nani ga ii de shouka? Santos sensei no omiyage wa nani ga ii de shouka? Now it's time for our last grammar point, which is nani nani daro or nani nani daro to omo. This is the plain form of nani nani de shou, which is used to express presumptions based from reasonable grounds. So this means that the speaker is saying something will probably so first let's review we learned about nani nani de show with a question mark from lesson 21 which is used to seek confirmation about something for example asatte yuki ga furu de show meaning it will snow the day after tomorrow right another one that we've learned is from lesson 31 which is we use nani nani desho in an affirmative voice, meaning not a question. Okay, so we have the plain form desho with a period. So this means that we are expressing our presumption, again, based from reasonable grounds. For example, ashita yuki ga furu desho. So we often hear this pattern from weather um, forecasts from the news because we don't certainly know what's going to happen with the weather. So we are just expressing our presumptions. So this means it will probably snow tomorrow. So how do we use this pattern? We just have to use the 
sentence in plain form plus daro or daro to umo in conversation. Okay, for example, it will probably snow tomorrow or it will snow tomorrow is ashita yuki ga furu. So again, we use the plain form. So instead of using desho, the affirmative desho, probably we use daro. So this is a more casual a way of saying it. Ashita yuki ga furu daro. It will probably snow tomorrow. So based from um, the forecast, we are making a presumption about the weather. Another example, even Maria's parents would have been shocked when they heard what she had to say. So the speaker is making a presumption uh, based from logical reasons. Maria-san no hanasu kiite. So when they uh, hear or once they heard um, what she has to say, guryoshin mo, even the parents will surely bikuri sareta, would have been shocked. Plus the word daro. So from the show, we can use daro. Maria-san no hanasu kiite, guryoshin mo kitto. Bikuri sareta daro. So again, the speaker expect the that the parents of Maria would have been shocked when they heard uh, what she said. It must be a very very um, shocking news or something. Now in conversation, it is common to add nani nani to omo. Okay, after daro, you can add to omo. I think. I presume or. I probably nani nani think that okay for example I think that he will pass the exam I believe he can do it so kare nara because it's him I believe that he will pass the exam shiken ni gokaku suru and then since uh, it is in conversation form we can say daro to omo kare nara shiken ni Gokaku suru daro to omo or to Okay, now it's time for bonus grammar points. The first one is nani nani kara nani nani te kudasai. So here kara does not indicate a reason. Okay, it doesn't mean because nani nani. In this case, sentence one indicates information needed for what follows, which is sentence two, meaning once you know this information, uh, do this uh, next instruction. So how do we use this pattern? We have the sentence one in polite form or mass form, kara, and then followed by the next instruction, which is a verb, te kudasai. For example, A says, I want to go to the art center. How should I go there? Gejutsu senta e ikitai n desu ga do ittara ii deshou ka? B says, Oh, go straight down the street. There are two roads about 100 meters ahead. So, please go to the right. So, sentence one is, There is going to be uh, two roads ahead. So, it will be branching about 100 meters so with this information the next instruction is to please go to the right you'll see it right away so we say ah kono tori o masugu itte go straight down the street hyaku metoru gurai saki de michi ga futatsu ni wakarete imasu kara it's going to branch out in two rows about 100 meters ahead. So, Migi no e itte kudasai. Please go to the right or please take the right uh, road. Sugu miemas, you'll see it right away. And our last bonus point is Nani nani ga nani nani no. Meaning that the ga particle of the subject of a clause describing a noun can be replaced by no. For example, I like the pictures that you took. Anata ga 
撮った写真が好きです。So, we are describing the noun 写真。So, what type of picture is it? The one that you took. So, the subject of the sentence is anata. So, it is usually marked by the particle ga. But in this case, we can change it to no. Anata no totta sashin. So, anata ga or anata no can be both used. Another example, the cake that Hiromi made was very delicious. So, we are describing the cake. What kind of cake? The one that Hiromi made. So, the subject here is Hiromi. Hiromi san ga sukutta keiki. So, we can change this to Hiromi san no sukutta keiki. Wa sugoku oishikatta. Hiromi san no sukutta keiki wa sugoku oishikatta. Hai, o t s k a r i s a m a d e s h t a Kyo no lesson wa do d e s h t a ka? Yaku ni tatta ra like button o o s h t e kudasai ne. Moshi komento toka sumon ga reba, zehi shita ni kaite kudasai. I hope you learned something today. Make sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the future lessons. I will see you in the next one. Mata ne! Shout out to our very first study buddy from Patreon. Mominul Rama. Thank you so much. And to all my Patreons, Hondani, Arigato Gozaimashita. 